I want to thank the from Maine for his uh, ever-present leadership on the issue of uh, unemployment insurance and also for fighting for jobs for Americans. Because we're really here looking at, at two problems. Uh, one is the problem of making sure that those who are on unemployment are on unemployment are going to get benefits so they can survive. And the other one is the massive unemployment that we have in America. I mean, obviously, these matters are interrelated. Let me speak first to uh, Mr. Michoud's motion to instruct conferees. This provision uh, to, to remove Section 2123 from H.R. 3610, this section severely undermines the unemployment insurance system that nearly 8 million Americans rely on. It allows states to apply for waivers that would change how un unemployment insurance funds are allocated. And it does this under the guise of strengthening reemployment programs. In reality, these proposed waivers would allow states to use unemployment insurance funds for purposes other than paying out benefits. Think about this. If people are on un unemployment insurance, they need those benefits. They need full benefits. You don't want the state to find an excuse to siphon those benefits to some other purpose. And by allowing the use of unemployment insurance funds for purposes other than providing unemployment benefits to those who rely on them, we'd be weakening a system that has provided assistance to unemployed Americans for decades. The rationale for the reallocation is deceptively camouflaged. It's being described as fulfilling additional benefits to the unemployed, such as bolstering job training programs, employment programs. Yet in reality, diverting funds from the unemployment insur insurance fund to other equally important programs is not a viable solution and will ultimately undermine the unemployment insurance system that millions rely on. The truth of this matter is that this Congress has been shirking its responsibility to independently and to adequately fund these programs. Section 2123 of this legislation also gives the states the ability to create their own eligibility requirements, which could impede otherwise eligible recipients from collecting their benefits. The waivers permitted under Section 2123 would give states the opportunity to impose new eligibility requirements on unemployment insurance recipients that are unrelated to their employment history and current unemployment status. This includes giving the states the right to require a high school diploma or GED as a prerequisite for receiving unemployment benefits. Now think about that. You have so many people who because of family situations have not been able to finish high school and they're working to support their families, they get laid off and then they're told, well, wait a minute, because you don't have a high school diploma, you can't get any benefits. This is a double punishment for people. What we should be doing is enabling people who are unemployed to be able to get a college education paid for while they're unemployed so that when they're graduated or better educated that when they come back into the workforce they can help make a greater contribution to our country. Frivolous requirements like giving states the right to requir uh, require a high school diploma or G GED as a prerequisite for receiving unemployment benefits will do nothing but prevent benefits from reaching those who need them the most. Home state of Ohio, the unemployment rate is still above 8 percent. Just last week, more than 20,000 Ohioans were on the brink of losing their extended benefits. The men and women of this country should not have the added stress of monitoring the government's attempts to deny or delay their unemployment benefits. We have to protect the integrity of the unemployment insurance program and those that rely on it. And while we're at it, we also have to start thinking about creating jobs in this country. We have at least 13 million people who are unemployed and another six million are underemployed. It's time we got America back to work, then we wouldn't be having this debate about unemployment insurance. Well, people are unemployed, they should get the benefits, and they should be full benefits. But we should also be creating jobs, and that's not what we're doing. We need new mechanisms to create jobs. We shouldn't tell people, well, the government doesn't have any money. Well, we're borrowing money from China, South Korea, and Japan, 
Why don't we start spending money into circulation? Look at what the Federal Reserve does. The Federal Reserve creates money out of nothing, gives it to banks. The banks park the money at the Fed. They gain interest. Our businesses are starved for lack of capital. What if, the, what if we, the government, took back the constitutional right that we have under Article 1, Section 8 to spend or create money, coin money, spend it in the circulation, create millions of jobs, put our country back to work, rebuild our infrastructure, more money for education, more money for health care. America's best days are ahead of it if we start to think about the mechanisms we have to create jobs in this country. In the meantime, we sure better protect those people who are unemployed. The mechanism I talked about is called the NEED Act, National Employment Emergency Defense Act. We have a means of getting Thanks people back expired. to work. In the meantime, if they're not working, let's make sure we don't curtail their unemployment benefits. Support the issue amendment. Thank you. Gentleman from Texas is recognized.